Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Rossi. Today we're going to create abstract art based on the work of artist Saul Lewitt. What you'll be needing today is a white piece of paper from your art folder with the label Saul Lewitt on it. If you don't have this in your folder, you can just use any piece of white paper. We need a pencil and eraser. We're going to need some markers and some crayons to draw with and color with, but you can use any other supplies you have at home as well. Last week we learned about concentric circles and repeating shapes over and over again to create an abstract design. This week we're going to do something similar but we're going to use some different shapes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper in half. This is going to give us two sections of our paper for us to make two different pictures today. I am just folding my paper like a book so I took the long ends on the left and on the right and folded them in together. I think it's easiest if you line them up on one side, matching up those corners, hold it down with one hand and then press it firmly with the other along the edge. Once you have it folded like a book, you can open it back up. And now we have that folded crease down the center, splitting our paper in half. So we have two different sections that we can draw in today. Now our artist, created art through giving directions. So he would give a list of rules that someone would follow to then produce his artwork. So he would say, like, you need to make this many lines or this kind of shape or use this color. And then whoever was making his work that day for that museum or that gallery would get to decide what it was going to look like once they were done. Now he gave very specific rules. So most of the time his pictures turned out very similar, even though different people were making them. So we're going to create two different drawings today on our paper, and you can draw whatever you would like as long as it meets our two rules. So just like our artist would give his rules for making his work, our two rules that we're going to follow today are that you need to have at least one repeating shape and you need to use at least three different colors. So we want both halves of our paper to look different and we want each half to have at least one shape that is repeating and at least three different colors being used. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do this and yours does not have to look like mine. As long as you have at least one shape that is repeating over and over again, and you have three different colors that you're using to color your picture in, then you are golden. So we saw the way that Kandinsky last week liked to repeat his shapes by going over and around and around and around with his circles to create rings of color as they got larger from the center. So we can do that with different shapes also. So I think in my first section, I'm going to repeat shapes like our artist did last week. I know Saul Lewitt has a painting similar to this where he uses a star. So I think I'm going to do it with a triangle and I'm going to start with a nice big triangle. So that is a shape that meets at three points. Again, your picture does not have to look like mine as long as you're meeting those two requirements of one repeating shape and three different colors, then yours is good. But these are just ideas. I'm going to draw some smaller triangles in the center. And then I'm going to make larger triangles around the outside. So you can repeat your shape like this, like we did last week, or you can get creative and come up with different ways you can repeat your shapes. Now I'm starting to hit this folded edge of my paper as I'm drawing. So I'm going to pretend like that is the edge of my paper. So I am just going to end my shape there and continue it on the other sides like this. So I don't wanna cross that imaginary folded line we have there. But all we need today is a nice, crazy looking abstract picture. All right, that is going to do it for my first side. So I have my repeating shape. My triangle is repeating over and over and over again to create a pattern or a design. And then once I color that in, I'll make sure to use three different colors. Now on this side, I can try and think of a different way I can repeat my shape. And maybe I can think of a different shape to use. What other kinds of shapes do you know? We can draw circles, triangles, ovals, squares, rectangles, diamonds, hearts, stars, any kind of shape you can come up with. I think on this side, I'm going to do some squares and I'm going to repeat my squares by having them overlap to create a line. 
So I am going to keep drawing squares that are all overlapping in that corner. And they are just going to carry themselves across the paper. So even though this looks different than my first drawing, I still have a repeating shape. I am drawing my squares over and over again. And I want to try and fill up most of my paper as I'm doing this. So I'm going to do another row of squares that are doing the same thing. And maybe I can even fit one above and below. How else can you repeat shapes? Can you create a pattern using shapes in a different way? What if you just repeated your shape all over the paper and I just drew all different kinds of squares all over the place? That would work too. Any way you can repeat your shape over and over again is going to work. Ooh, my squares are starting to turn into rectangles. That's okay though, they don't have to be perfect. I could put a square in that corner. I think I could fit another row of my squares down here. So this week, everybody's picture is going to look different. Now that I finished sketching out my designs and I met that first rule that we had of drawing one shape repeating over and over again, if you want to include other shapes in there as well, you can as long as you have at least one that is repeating, I can move on and start to add some color. With my markers, I am going to pick three different colors for each of my sides. I think with my triangles, oops, I am going to use red, yellow, and blue. Now we used red, yellow, and blue when we talked about our artist Mondrian, and we talked about how red, yellow, and blue are our primary colors. They are our colors that are used to mix together to make all of our other colors of the rainbow. And I'm just going to use these to trace over my triangles. So I'm just going right on top of my pencil lines with my triangles. And now I am using three different colors. So I have met the other rule of our project. And I'm going to create a pattern by repeating my colors too. So I'm going red, yellow, blue, and then repeating those colors. So doing them over again, red, yellow, blue, until I run out of space. Now, if you wanted to use more than three colors, you can do that as long as you're using at least three, then you are good. I think I can just fit these two yellow lines up at the top. Now that I finished tracing all of those with my marker, I'm just going to quickly go in with my eraser and erase any of those pencil lines that I can still see. section the way that it is right now. I can always go back in with my crayons or even with my markers again and just color in all of those different shapes, but I think I might want to leave that as lines for right now. I'm going to think about that and come back to it at the end. Now I'm going to work on my other half of my paper. So I'm going to use a black marker this time to just trace over all of my squares and I am going to use some crayons to color them in. And like before, I'm going to pick three different colors to color in this half of my picture. I think I want to pick some colors that are different than what I have over there. I think I'll use my secondary colors. So our secondary colors are the colors that our primary colors mix together to make. So orange, green, and purple are our secondary colors. Now our red and our yellow mix together to make orange and our blue and yellow mixed together to make green. Do you know what colors mix together to make purple? Our red and our blue mix together to make purple. So I'm going to use those on this half. You can use different colors than me. Your picture can look however you would like. 
And if you wanna use more than three colors, you can do that as well. All right, I'm done tracing over my squares. I'm just going to use my eraser and erase those extra pencil lines that I can still see. And now having all of these squares over and over again almost looks like a big staircase going across my paper. It looks like I have two zigzag lines. Sometimes when we overlap and repeat shapes, they can transform into different kinds of patterns and designs that resemble other things we see in life and other kinds of lines and shapes. Like these almost look like diamonds too. All right, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to grab an orange and a green crayon and I'm going to color in my rows of my squares with my orange and green crayon and then I'm going to do the background of it with my purple. Alright, and that is the right side of my picture all finished being colored in. I know I said I was going to go back to this one, but I think I like the way that it looks with just those lines of colors to make up my triangles. So I think I'm going to leave my picture the way that it is. So now I have my artwork finished based on the work of Solowit. So we followed our two directions of using one repeating shape and three different colors. So I have my three different colors, which are my primary colors of red, yellow, and blue on the left side. And I have my repeating shape of that triangle. And I repeated it like we did our concentric circles last week. And then on my right side, I have my secondary colors, my orange, green, and purple, made up of repeating squares that I repeated in lines. So my two pictures follow the same rules, but came out totally different. Just like your picture is going to look different than mine. And it's going to look different than your friend's picture. And that is totally okay. We want all of our artwork to look a little different today. Once you're finished with your abstract pictures, you can take a photo or video of it and upload it on my Canvas page. I can't wait to see your creative abstract drawings today. Try your best, have fun, and get creative. I'll see you soon. Bye!